Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We're going to be joined with Alex Jones at the bottom of the hour. He's going to talk about the global meltdown that has already begun. And of course, part of that is the restructuring and the collapse of our economy. And one of the ways they do that is to massively increase the welfare rolls. Our country cannot absorb the massive amount of immigrants that are coming in. They very well know that. They've done social study experiments about this. Cloward and Piven were two of the social scientists who put forth a theory that this is exactly what needed to be done. But of course, there's another aspect of this, and that is the NAFTA aspect. After enacting this into law 20 years ago, they now want to make it an accomplished fact. And we have uh, some information about that that we're going to play in a few minutes. But I wanted to get back to what I was talking about just before the break, because we played that quote from Nancy Pelosi saying, I wish I could take all these children home. Well, of course, she can't take all these children home. Why? Because she can't support them. And the same thing that keeps her from taking all these children home is what makes it impossible for America to take all the poor children of the world. If I wanted to adopt 100 children, I would be stopped by our government. I would not be able to pass the income means test that would allow me to adopt that number of children. I wouldn't have the size house that I need for 100 kids. And we cannot bring all the poor children of the world into America. What they're trying to do with this is to create a cycle of dependency and to have an economic collapse. If they truly wanted to help these children, they could help them by removing many of the impediments that are bringing their countries down. Of course, it's been the World Bank and the bankers who have, in places like Venezuela, getting 700% on their return on their investment. And the World Bank, under Robert McNamara, who was essentially accused and truly was rent-seeking, putting them on welfare status so that he could in debt and collapse those countries through debt. And then we added to that a war on drugs, a war where for our cocaine, uh, we, we run the Iran-Contra uh, scandal for cocaine, bring that stuff in with, uh, a, uh, uh, in, with a crack cocaine uh, in L.A., as well as the war on drugs in Afghanistan. When it was under the Taliban, they were only supplying 10% of the world's supply of heroin. After the American army occupied them, that has soared. Record production each year. It's now over 90% of the world's supply comes from Afghanistan. We're helping the farmers there to grow it. We're importing it. And yet we are exporting violence and weapons and arms into all these countries all over the world, especially in Central and South America. So if we really wanted to help them, there are ways to do it other than bringing them here. It is impractical for us, no matter how much we want to do it. And this is what many of my Christian friends need to understand. It is misplaced compassion to say that you're going to bring all of these children into America and take care of them. You can't do that any more than you could bring all these children into your home or that Nancy Pelosi could bring them into her home. But I'm afraid she doesn't really want to do that. She wants to bring them into the community. She wants the community to be their parents. Just as Plato said in the Republic, they want these kids to see the government as their family. They're going to treat them better than they treat our veterans. They're already doing that. We're going to provide them with free rides for a college education. They're already doing that. They give them in-state tuition, whatever state they wish to go to. You and I, as American citizens, can't do that, but they can do that. They will give them free ride tuition at the universities. And if a middle class American student wants to do that, they're going to become debt slaves to these very banks who will not release them from that education debt, even if they declare bankruptcy. But of course, if you want to get rid of that indebtedness to the bankers, you can always sign up as an indentured servant to Obama's youth corps or to become a teacher or to do something else for the government. See, if you turn your life over to the government for a few years as an indentured servant, maybe they'll give you a break on that because it's all about exerting control. 
and collapsing the economy. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back with more reports from InfoWars reporters at the border and with Alex Jones telling us about global collapse. Stay I with began us. to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. KLN Los Angeles Clone Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. Clone. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. I am sworn upon the altar of God, eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We're going to be joined at the bottom of the hour with a new report from Alex Jones about the global meltdown. It has begun. And that's what we see at the borders is a meltdown, a collapse at the border. Before I go to the clip from Petraeus and Pelosi talking about uh, how they view our new country that we're starting to see now. I wanted to cover what she had to say about these children. Now, she mentioned several times about their dignity. She used that phrase at least twice in her short speech. But of course, they don't give us any dignity. They don't even give our children any dignity when the TSA comes calling, either at the airport or at the bus station or the railroad station or the roadblocks. They're not giving us dignity. But they're saying that they need to treat these children with dignity. They need to treat them differently than they treat the rest of us. And that report from Alex that this will end the TSA, that is now live on our website as well as on YouTube. You need to see that. We need to point out the hypocrisy of what is going on within the country versus what's going on at the borders. And, of course, this is all being done by the same bureaucracy, Homeland Security, created in the wake of the 9-11 false flags. Everything about this agency is a lie. And that's what we see happening now. They've taken over law enforcement. They've taken over the border. And look at what they're doing. They're turning the police into a militarized occupational force that thinks that they're fighting a counterinsurgency war here in America. That's everything that they're training for. And just so that they're not disappointed, they're going to bring in drug cartels into America so we can have a real war just like they do in Mexico. And of course, we've been driving that war for them in Mexico. But there's a lot of corruption in Mexico as well. Look at this article. Mexican military incursion assisting drug smugglers in the USA have a shootout with Texas police. This is by Sarah Carter. It was at the end of the week last week. They said Mexican soldiers and civilian smugglers had an armed standoff with nearly 30 U.S. law enforcement officials on the Rio Grande in Texas last Monday, according to Texas police and the FBI. Now, I find it interesting that the local Texas police, uh, the, the Texas police and the local police there have a very different take on it than the FBI. First, we were told uh, that, well, you know, they came across, I think it was accidental or whatever. Then as the week went on, the FBI comes out with a statement and says, well, bad guys in three vehicles 
ended up on the border. People with Humvees who appeared to be with the Mexican army uh, were uh, involved with the three vehicles and getting them back across. Now, we're told by the local law enforcement and Texas police that what was happening was the Mexican military was escorting these drug smugglers across the border. As we have Homeland Security standing down the border patrol. It's a very different take on it versus the federal government versus the local and state law enforcement. And that's the problem. These problems are being driven by Homeland Security. They're being driven by the federal government. They're the ones who are pushing the police to shoot first and not even ask questions. They're changing the rules of engagement. They're changing the way the police treat the public. They're making the police paranoid about their safety more so than they are about the safety of the public. That's never a concern for them anymore if they follow the kinds of training that they're getting in New Mexico and all over the country. New Mexico has been leading this with their uh, shootings in Albuquerque, with their uh, no hesitation uh, targets, but also with their shoot first policy at the New Mexico State Police Academy. And they've had instructors there resign in protest. This is being driven by the federal government. And notice that it's the FBI that is downplaying the fact that it's the Mexican federales that are coming across. So, you know, we've got our own federales. We've got our own corruption in the American government. There's always this compartmentalization. Many people who are honest law enforcement uh, People at the local and the state level don't realize that it's the federal government that is running the drug war, that is running the drug trade, just as it was the federal government shipping arms across the border. And you had a local uh, or you had other law enforcement that was compartmentalized at the bottom trying to stop it and got killed. That's why Fast and Furious blew up in their face, because you had some law enforcement officers who were trying to do the real job, while other law enforcement officers, quote unquote, from the federal government were actually violating the law. Why? So they could take down the Second Amendment. We also see that a study has said that all employment growth since 2000 went to immigrants. Now this is also from the National Review. This came out on Friday. I would say it went to illegal aliens, or as they would say in New York, residents and undocumented immigrants. This is the Center for Immigration Studies said that a net employment growth in the United States since 2000 has gone entirely to immigrants, legal and illegal. They found that there were 127,000 fewer working age natives holding a job in the first quarter of 2014 than in 2000, while the number of immigrants with the job was 5.7 million above the 2000 level. Do you understand? Right now, that is being driven by Organizations like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and big business are pushing for cheap labor to come in. But it isn't going to be people from Central and South America that are going to be taking our jobs in just a few years. Our jobs are going to be disappearing to robots. It's not going to be the Mexicans. It's going to be the metal cans who are going to be taking people's jobs. It's going to be service sector jobs, not just manufacturing jobs. One of the first service sectors to go is going to be transportation. And that's going to happen, according to many estimates, in as little as three to five years. They're rolling back the legal restrictions, the technological advances are there for computer-driven cars. And we should be very concerned about not only the economic effect that it's going to have on the country, but also the control that it's going to allow the government to exercise. Now, I want to go to the comment that uh, Nancy Pelosi had about uh, abortion. Uh, listen to, and she wasn't talking about abortion, but I want to have you think about this in terms of abortion. Listen to what she was saying about the children coming across. If you believe, as we do, that every child, every person has a spark of divinity in them and is therefore worthy of respect, what we saw in those rooms was dazzling, sparkling array of God's children worthy of respect. There we go. Now, this is the same woman, the same political party, that is trying to force mandatory government-funded, well, the government funds abortions in many cases, but now they want to force abortion coverage on individuals and on companies. And that's a case that's coming up before the Supreme Court this week. She's talking about this divine light and that these are children of God. What about the children who are aborted? Do we not have that kind of respect?